This lesson is for section 1.6 on equations of lines. Today our objective is to write equations of lines. All right, so let's start off with our two basic forms for linear equations. We've got point slope form. That's y minus y1, which is equal to m times x minus x1. And of course, x1, y1 represents just any point on the line. And m is the slope of that line. Now slope intercept form, a little bit different. We have y equals mx plus b. We still have m as our slope, but b is now our y-intercept. Okay, And then finally, if we define slope, so slope is just a rate of change. And typically, that rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. And whenever we have a horizontal line, our equation will always be in the form y is equal to a number. And if we have a vertical line, that equation is x is equal to some number. And finally, um, parallel lines are always going to have the same slope. And if you have lines, two lines that are perpendicular, they're going to have opposite reciprocal slopes. So for example, if the slope of one line is 2 thirds, the slope of a line perpendicular to that line would have to be negative 3 halves. All right, so let's work on a few basic examples before we work our way up to some more difficult questions. First example says, find the equation of the line through 2 sixths that is parallel to the x-axis. So just graphically, if you think about this, if you want a line that's parallel to the x-axis, this is going to be a horizontal line, which means if it's going to go through the point 2 sixths, the y-coordinate here, which is 6, would have to define that line. So our equation would have to be y is equal to 6. Now for part b, once again, um, our line is going to go through the point 2, 6, but it also has an x-intercept of 5. So from here, you're going to have to translate what this information is telling you. So if it has an x-intercept of 5, that means we know it goes through the point 5, 0. So now we have two distinct points on that line. So all we have left to do now is find the slope. So if we find the slope, we're going to take 6 minus 0 over 2 minus 5. So we get negative 2. Okay, so here's our slope, and after that, the form I would definitely use here, unless it specifies which form to use, I would always use point slope. It's definitely the easier of the two forms. So from here, you can pick any point you want. y minus 0 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 5. Or you can use the other point and write that as y minus 6 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 2. And finally, for this last example, it says find the equation of the line that's through the point 2, 6 once again but is perpendicular to the line 2x plus 3y equals 6. So one of the very first things you need to figure out is the slope of your new line. We know it goes through the point 2, 6, okay? But we're missing the slope. All we need is to do is find that slope. So we're going to look at the line 2x plus 3y equals 6, and I want to figure out the slope of that line so that I can find the opposite reciprocal slope. So we have to solve for y we end up with negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So now we're going to steal this slope here, take the opposite reciprocal, okay, which is 3 halves, and that'll be our new slope over here. So we have a new slope of 3 halves. We're going to use this coordinate point here. We have the line y minus 6 is equal to 3 halves times x minus 2. And there's our final answer. All right, so those last few examples were definitely review. Um, now, example two is a little bit more complex. It says to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the segment with endpoints 2, 6, and 4, negative 5. So let's make sure we understand what this is asking for just in a picture first, just so you can visualize. So we have the coordinates 4, negative 5, and 2, 6, okay? These form a segment. What we want to do is find the equation of a line like this, that's going to be a perpendicular bisector. So it's going to cut that segment in half and also be perpendicular to that segment. So at this point, if we want to find the equation of this line here, realize it doesn't go through either point 2, 6, or 4, negative 5. So we're definitely not going to use those two coordinates. What we need to do is find that point where it's intersecting that, that segment. We need to find the midpoint of our, of our segment here. So find the midpoint of 2, 6 and 4, negative 5. So we're going to take 2 and 4, add them together, cut them in half. Take 6 and negative 5, whoops, add them together, cut it in half. So we end up with the coordinate 3, 1 half. Okay, so there's our midpoint. Alright, now we're halfway there. All that's left to find is the slope of that line. Okay, so let's find the slope. Well, to find that slope, we know that it's going to be perpendicular to this segment, so that means we have to find the slope 
of the segment that connects the points 2, 6, and 4, negative 5. So we're going to find the slope between these two points. So let's take 6 minus negative 5 over 2 minus 4. We end up with 11 over negative 2. So if this is the slope of this red segment here, then the blue segment, um, that's going to be the opposite reciprocal. Our new slope is positive 2 elevenths which means that if we want to write the equation of this perpendicular bisector, that would be y minus 1 half is equal to 2 elevenths times x minus 3. So we're just going to use this slope and this point in order to write this equation. All right, now before we move on, please make sure that you're very comfortable doing problems like this. Let's say, for example, if I were to put this on a homework quiz tomorrow, hint, hint, you would know exactly what to do, okay? Let's move on now to example 3. It says, if a line goes through 6, 2 and has a slope of negative 3, find the area of the triangle bounded by the line and the coordinate axes. So I like to just draw a little picture here, a sketch, just to kind of give me an idea of what this problem is asking. So I know that we have a line that goes through 6, 2, so some point out here, and has a slope of negative 3. So if it has a negative slope, I have to draw it in like this, okay? And I'm supposed to find the area of the triangle that's bounded by this line here and the coordinate axes. Well, that would be this triangle here, okay? So let me do this in blue. So if I want to find the area, I need to know the base and the height of this triangle. So from here, it looks kind of like we have limited information, but we do have enough in order to find both of these coordinates. So we know we have a slope of negative 3. We also know it goes to the point 6, 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the equation of that line in point-slope form. So y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 6. Now from here, um, I'm going to put this into slope-intercept form. So if I do that, now I can see that that coordinate here, that y-intercept, all the way up here is 20, which means now I know the segment length is 20. Okay, so now I'm one step closer to finding the area of that triangle. All I have left to find is the base. So I have 1 half times base times the height, which I know is already 20. Now to find that um, x-coordinate here, really what I'm looking for is the x-intercept of that line. So now to find the x-intercept, I'm going to take this equation here, and I'm just going to plug in y is equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0, I'm solving this equation negative 3x plus 20 is equal to 0, and I end up with um, x is equal to 20 thirds, okay? All right, so now that I have that coordinate here is 20 thirds, 0. Now I know the length of that segment is 20 thirds. Whoops, should get rid of that b, sorry about that. So if I multiply this out, I have, um, let's just simplify actually, so that goes into there 10 times, so we have 200 thirds. So the area of that triangle is 200 thirds, uh, 200 thirds of a square unit squared. Wait, did I just say square unit squared? I did. Sorry. Area is 200 thirds. All right, our last example here is a model problem. It says, Prospect sells 25 sweatshirts when the price of each is $38. For each $2 increase in price, the number sold will decrease by 7. Write an equation that models this situation for the price P and the number sold N. All right, so one of the first things I would suggest that you do is to define your variables and write your ordered pairs, okay? So let's define our variables. Well, in this case, it sounds to me like price is the independent variable, and that's because the price is dictating how many sweatshirts are sold. If you increase the price, then that means you're selling less sweatshirts, and if you decrease the price, then you're selling more sweatshirts. So I definitely think that price is going to be the independent variable. Now, that's probably a lot different than what you did last year in 90s. I'm guessing most of the model problems that you had, the independent variable was um, usually a number of items sold, but in this case, it's the opposite. So I'm going to define the independent variable as the price. And N is the number of sweatshirts sold. Now that also means I have an ordered pair here, 38.25. Okay, so for a price of $38, you're going to sell 25 sweatshirts. All right. Now the next sentence here, which says, for each $2 increase in price, the number sold will decrease by 7. Okay, this is actually telling you a rate of change. Remember, rate of change is a slope. So whenever they tell you how something increases or decreases based on something else, that's a rate of change. So for in this example, it says when you increase the price by $2, 
the number sold will decrease by 7. So let's talk about what our slope should be. Well, slope is just change in y over change in x. Now in our case, we defined our y, our dependent variable to be n. So that's the change in n over the change in p. So let's just substitute in here. The change in the number of sweatshirts sold, it says it'll decrease by 7, so that's going to be negative 7. For the change in the price here, that's a $2 increase, so that's positive 2 here. That gives us our slope. So our slope here is negative 7 halves. So we now have a point here, and we have this slope here. And we can write this in point slope form. So y minus, oops, sorry, it's not going to be y. We're going to use our dependent variable, which is n. n minus 25 is equal to negative 7 halves times p minus 38. All right, now from here, um, I'm going to put this into slope intercept form. I'm going to isolate that n. So let's go ahead and distribute. All right, so here we're going to have a positive. Uh, this goes in there 19 times. So 19 times 7 is going to give me 133. So we have 9 minus 25. Add that 25 to the other side. We end up with this linear equation. So uh, negative 7 halves p plus uh, 158. All right, so in this form here you can clearly plug in any price and see the number of sweatshirts sold so this is the easiest form to use once you're dealing with a word problem because they're usually going to follow up with asking you some specific questions about the price and how it's affecting the number of sweatshirts sold so i would definitely put it into slope intercept form when you're dealing with a word problem but for everything else you can start and keep it in point slope form okay all right and finally i just want to mention one last thing uh, let's say instead you had used the ordered pair n comma p that would be okay to use uh, you would just get a different slope here. Instead of using change in n over change in p, you would have to make sure you use change in price over the change in the number of sweatshirts sold. So this would result in a different function than this one here. It would look different, but it would still give you the same outcome if you were to plug in a specific price or a specific number of sweatshirts sold. So it's okay to do that. In fact, on my answer key, you'll see for your homework, I've done it both ways. So it's up to you how you want to define your variables. Um, but in this case, I just chose to use price as our independent variable. But it would have been okay to make it like that. All right? Nice job. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.